Hey everyone, thank you for coming to the last talk on the PyData track. Uh, I'm Or and this is Alex, and we're from Twiggle. And today we're going to be talking about data pipelines. Okay, before we get started, just a few words about Twiggle. We do search for e-commerce by semantically understanding products and queries. Uh, we create structured data for them, and our customers, which are large e-commerce websites, match those structured queries to structured products to create relevant results. Uh, an example is the query long dress short sleeves, which is hard to match by keywords because long and short are negated. But when we understand context, it's much easier to match. Uh, our flow looks a little bit like this. Uh, our customers get structured data from us, which they index in their search engine. When an end user queries their server, uh, they'll query us and we'll send them some structured data for the query. And they'll use that to match it for relevant results and the end user will send us some analytics for us to uh, improve our NLP engine. So today we're gonna be talking about workflows a little bit, then we'll take a deep dive into Airflow, Luigi, and finally we'll compare the two. Okay, so uh, before diving into Airflow and Luigi, we'd like to, take, uh, to talk a bit about wor workflows in general, and we'll start with a simple example of uh, ETL. So say you have a customer logs you want to uh, read from some uh, cloud storage, then uh, aggregate or analyze them and store in the, into your own storage. So uh, the simple way to do it is to create uh, free Python scripts, which will, uh, uh, which will be invoked uh, sequentially using cron job. Uh, this will work unless something fails. So for example, <laughs> like everything, <laughs> So for example, uh, if read will uh, take uh, more than an hour or maybe it fails just to network uh, problems, uh, then it's hard to tell what Analyze will do. Like in the best case scenario, it will read nothing, it will write nothing, but it can also read the insufficient data and fail and then the store fail. Uh, so. What is the best solution for this problem? Uh, we can uh, add some more cron time between the jobs. Uh, this will might help a bit, but won't solve all the scenarios. Uh, we can write a wrapper around the jobs, which sounds about right, but why work hard when we can uh, use an existing uh, workflow framework? So uh, what we would like this framework to do? We would like it to be simple. We would like that to create job will be simple enough and to configure and it will be configurable to sequence dependency and branching and branching of tasks. And it will also be nice to have uh, some logging, maybe UI scheduler for the task, uh, some error handling or notification uh, to email or Slack. Uh, so let's dive into Airflow a little bit. Uh, Airflow was created by Airbnb in 2014 and was open sourced in 2015 to the Apache Foundation, who maintains it today. Uh, other than being a workflow framework, it takes care of scheduling. Uh, there's, some, there's good error handling and recovery and extensive UI, many plugins uh, for the main cloud providers, different resources, uh, from Slack notifications, different databases, Docker, Spark, etc. It's quite easy to extend, as we'll see in a few minutes. It does require a few nodes to run. Uh, there's a scheduler, a server, some workers, and a database. We run a managed option on Google Cloud Platform, which makes it quite a bit easier. Uh, what we use Airflow for is to enrich our customers' uh, product catalog with the structured data we saw before. So we want to get this product into the catalog. We want to do many of them, and we want it to run every night. Uh, some of our customers will allow us to download their catalog and upload it back uh, with an API. So our basic steps will be download the catalog, uh, enrich it with Triggle Structured Data, and upload it back. We'll want our product uh, to run on a nightly schedule. Our customers may want to trigger the workflow themselves uh, just in case they want to run in the middle of the day. Uh, UI would be nice to have for us. We want logs and metrics in case there are any errors and notifications for us and for our customers. The first thing we'll do is uh, create a basic workflow. Uh, workflow is called the Dagon Airflow, and it looks like this. Uh, you can see here two tasks on the bottom, print context and sleep. Uh, the DAG is called my DAG. Uh, and in Python, 
we will use Airflow's DAG uh, class, we'll instantiate Airflow's DAG class with a schedule interval uh, and cron tab expression. Then we'll create our print context task. It's mostly just boilerplate, except for the Python callable line, which you can see in bold. Uh, we just print the context. Then we'll create a sleep task, which will sleep for hard-coded five seconds. Again, you can see the bold line. And finally, we'll use Python's shift right operator to denote that sleep task comes after our print context task. Uh, once we've done this and deployed it, uh, we'll be able to see our main view. Uh, we can see our DAG in the first line. We can either run it manually uh, here, or you can see that it runs on a schedule here. It'll run every night at 12 a.m. Uh, once we've run it a few times, you can see a few metrics on the DAG. There are different metrics pages. Uh, you can see details for each task run that was run and logs for each task run. Uh, and that's it, there are a lot of nice details in the UI. Uh, but what happens if we don't want to use a hard-coded sleep timeout, we want to configure it. Well, for that, Airflow has a key value store. It's, it calls variables. So we'll create a sleep timeout variable in that key value store. And then all we'll need to do is use Airflow's variable API to read it. And instead of hard coding the sleep timeout, we'll set the variable inside uh, and just replace our task. Now, let's say one of our customers wants to trigger our API that we just built, or our, sorry, workflow that we just built, uh, and they want an API, like an HTTP API, uh, and they want to set the timeout themselves. Maybe something that looks a little bit like this uh, with trigger DAG and a seven second timeout in the parameter. Uh, and we may want a UI, an Airflow UI for ourselves as well, just to work with it. Uh, so the first thing we do in order to create this plugin is actually update our DAG. Uh, we want to rewrite the sleep task again to read the sleep variable from the correct place. So instead of a Lambda function, this time we'll use a regular Python function. Uh, we'll call it sleep by configuration, where it reads the sleep timeout from the workflow context, and then sleeps for that amount of time. Uh, and then we'll just replace the lambda function with our regular function. Uh, and now to writing a plugin, which is also quite easy. Uh, Airflow is a bit strict on folder structure. So you can see on the right, uh, the folder structure for a plugin within the API plugin folder. Uh, the first thing we'll do to create an endpoint is create a Flask blueprint, just regular Flask, which Airflow uses. And then we'll create that blueprint root, uh, which will trigger a DAG with Airflow's trigger DAG API. Uh, we'll configure the sleep timeout and return 200 on success and 400 on error. Finally, we will have to write a little bit of boilerplate to let Airflow know about the plugin. Uh, we'll inherit Airflow's plugin class, uh, name our plugin, and tell it about our Flask blueprint. And that's it. This uh, plugin will completely work and we'll be able to trigger DAGs via an HTTP API. HTTP API. Uh, our GitHub, a GitHub code for a little bit more extensive plugin is here. Uh, we'll show you the link at the end again. Okay, uh, so now uh, let's talk a bit more about uh, Luigi. Uh, so why Luigi? Because it handles uh, pipes. Uh, it, was, <laughs> it was created by Spotify back in 2012, uh, then open sourced by them and still being maintained by Spotify. It's really, it has a really nice and minimal boilerplate, has a really nice uh, error recovery mechanisms, and it supports all the off-the-shelf uh, products like uh, AWS, GCP, Spark, etc. So how do we use uh, Luigi in Twiggle? So in, in, addition to, in addition to our main product that was presented earlier, we have an analytics product. We read the customer's uh, logs, and then we run some uh, anomaly detection algorithms on them, and we give the customer insights such this. So here we can see uh, the different behavior of uh, different brands who went up, who went down, and also maybe example of trending products, um, Sun Hat was increased in the last day, and so on. Uh, so how do we do it? So our main goal is to run anomaly detection uh, algorithms to to, to detect anomalies. 
Uh, but beforehand, we need to do a couple of things. We need to load data from different sources. We need to run Twiggle NLP. Uh, we need to run some sanitation overrides and uh, data preparation tasks. And in the end, we need to run the, the actual anomaly detection. So our workflow looks something like this. And we would like that each square would be a Luigi task. So we create a Luigi task similar to this one. We extend Luigi task. Sorry, we extend Luigi task and then we need to um, implement three methods, requires, uh, output, and run. In requires, we define the previous task it is dependent on. Uh, in output, we specify which, uh, uh, where, where to save the data to, to some local storage or maybe cloud. And run executes the actual code of the task. Uh, so our previous workflow will look something like this in Luigi. We have uh, two loading tasks that uh, loads data from different sources, uh, translate it, and saves it in a common location. Uh, then we define an NLP task, uh, which uh, depends on the pre two previous tasks. So what will happen when we invoke the NLP task? First, it checks if the previous tasks were done successfully. And if so, it will run its code. And if it's not, it will run the previous task. And because it's all, uh, all py simple Python code, we can uh, run it from the command line by uh, executing the, the file and specifying the last task to, to execute. So actually, the, the first task to, ex to be executed is the last task in the, in the workflow. So it's like a bottom-up approach. Um, so how, do we, how can we scale this? Uh, there are many ways to scale it. But uh, WindWiggle used uh, mainly Spark because Luigi likes Spark. And it connects really nice with it. Uh, instead of uh, extending Spark, uh, uh, instead of extending Luigi task, we can uh, extend uh, PySpark task. And uh, if we define the Spark cluster, it just runs in the cluster. So uh, we use the following setup. We have a single Luigi server for the task uh, orchestration. Uh, each non-trivial task is executed as Spark, a Spark task in our predefined cluster. Uh, the main Luigi task is invoked using uh, Jenkins once a day, and we use Data Lake, uh, Google Cloud Storage as our Data Lake. So our Spark task uh, can look something like this. Uh, we defined a simple task that uh, it uh, checks if the file exists, and if so, it returns its file, its file descriptor. Then we define the Spark uh, task that depends on the previous one and runs a Spark Hello World. Uh, if anyone's familiar with this, it's uh, just counting the words in the document and saves it in, the, in some uh, uh, AWS S3 storage. So this will actually run out of the box if you you just need to define the, uh, the paths for Spark. Okay, now the moment everyone's been waiting for, uh, we'll compare them. Uh, comparing them is a bit like comparing uh, Python's Flask framework to the Django web uh, framework. Uh, Airflow is more like Django, it's more extensive, but it's also more difficult to maintain and more cumbersome, whereas Luigi is uh, more lean, but has less features. Um, so one of the main uh, differences between Luigi and Airflow is that Luigi is uh, has a, uh, is dependent on the data. The tasks are dependent on data, uh, which means if a certain task was already executed and was successful, we cannot rerun it. So uh, unless we tweak some code or maybe remove the data. So it has some pros and cons. The pros are if we have, a, say, a simple workflow consisted of two tasks, the first one uh, was uh, successful and the last failed, we can rerun it, and the first one won't run. Uh, the cons of this approach is that um, we cannot rerun a successful task. So if we have a successful workflow, we cannot rerun it unless we, uh, again, tweak the code or remove the data. Uh, it also has a bottom-up approach, and we execute the less, the first task is the the last one in the workflow. Uh, and Airflow tasks are dependent on tasks, so it's not uh, idempotent like Luigi is. 
it, if we want it to be, we would have to write special cases inside each of our tasks. Uh, and it's executed by triggering a workflow and not the last uh, task in the workflow, so it would be a top-down approach. Um, what is nice about Luigi is that it's relatively simple Python code, so we can uh, wrap the task, we can uh, use some so our, our own code, we can uh, use our own methods. Uh, one of the disadvantages, it has no built-in scheduler, which means we need a third-party software to schedule the first one, like a cron job or a Jenkins. Uh, so Python's shift right operator is not uh, in the correct location in our Airflow DAG, or not in a Pythonic uh, location. So you can probably conclude that uh, a DAG is dynamically built. Uh, this mean, this makes it a little bit more difficult to reuse code. Uh, you have to you have to use a specific folder structure and your ID may not uh, help you with code completion. Uh, it's a little bit harder to configure. Like I said, we run on GCP, but for on-prem instances, it may be harder to administer. But it does have a built-in scheduler, which makes it uh, very useful for us. Um, Luigi, unfortunately, has a web UI, uh, poor web UI, which is not uh, really usable. But uh, it's simple API and uh, ability to extend it easily makes up for it. It also has fewer dependencies, which is nice when you install it. Uh, Airflow has a nice web UI and a web server, which you can extend. Uh, but it has many dependencies, again, more like Django. Uh, that's it. <laughs>